Hi guys, so my name is Jamie Evans. I chose human trafficking for my final project topic and human trafficking is something I've known about for a while and I've been aware of for a while, at least since, at least since my freshman year of college, but um, I, I'm pretty sure I, it was a thing, like I knew about it back in high school as well. But um, to me, it's become a bigger topic since I've been in college. Um, it's a lot more talked about, at least between my major professors. One of my uh, art professors, she has a series on human trafficking and she has her students do series on human trafficking as well. She wants to make sure that it's a well-known topic that's talked about and she has high hopes that there will be an end to it one day and that like something will be done about it. And her series is phenomenal it's amazing and i love it but um what is human trafficking human trafficking is a lot of things actually it's not just sexual trafficking or labor trafficking it's a lot of different things but it's basically the movement of a person or people for labor or sexual exploitation but there's more than just sexual and labor exploitation there's also um I think another one that I saw that was bizarre to me was uh, organ extraction. So that was interesting because I did not know that. But it's so much more complicated than just being a movement of people. Um, traffickers usually use force or manipulation to obtain these people or victims. And they usually install fear in these people, which keeps them from leaving or going anywhere. They also keep a hold of this person's personal documents, birth certificate, passports, what have you, to prevent them from leaving. Um, one source that I found, uh, one reference, broke down human trafficking into three elements, which would be the act, the means, and the purpose. The act is basically the what of the whole situation. Basically the transfer or the harboring of people from place to place. Um, the means would be the tactics that they use or the way they lure their victims and how they take, how they get a hold of them to take them anywhere. And the purpose would be the exploitation, the prostitution, or the forced labor which would be the why they are taking them, the reason that they are taking them, wherever they are taking them. But though all of this is going on, it's kind of considered a silent crime because most of the victims aren't going to want to talk about the situation that they're in. They're not going to put themselves out there out of fear of either the police or the law enforcement or even their trafficker, whoever's holding them they don't want anything to happen to them or their family because families are often threatened in these kind of situations. But there is a, um, a, a human trafficking hotline that a lot of people actually call apparently. And in 2019, they recorded over 23,700 contacts and they recorded 4,500 cases that I'm assuming were resolved or handled. And since 2007, yes, yeah, since 2007, they reported 246,267 contacts, which seems like a lot, but considering how many years that is and how many people are in this situation or these situations, that doesn't feel like a lot to me, but they had 56,000, 504 cases reported from those contacts, which is a very low number compared to how many they were given. But they receive over 190,000 calls and uh, over 13,900 emails. But that's the whole nation. Like that's America, the United States alone. In North Carolina alone, they received 6,126 contacts and 1,422 cases since 2017 
2007 to now. And that's North Carolina alone. So this is happening in everyone's backyard. Um, so it's not really something you can just overlook. However, there are people and there are organizations that are trying to do stuff. For example, the hotline that people can call and report um, things that don't seem right, I guess. There are signs that you can look for. Usually they're quiet or they have anxiety and they don't like to talk about their situations. But another big factor of human trafficking is what happened to be like the venues. That also varies from state to state. Um, in North Carolina, I compared North Carolina and Arkansas. Um, I live in North Carolina and Arkansas was a random state that I picked, ironically. But the top five labor trafficking venues in North Carolina consist of agriculture, construction, domestic work, begging rings, and food service. Whereas in Arkansas, it consists of forestry, healthcare, agriculture, and construction. Only two of those are the same. So I, this is something that varies between your area or wherever you end up. It's likely gonna be different wherever you go. And the same goes for sex trafficking as well. Because in North Carolina, escort services is apparently a big thing. But in Arkansas, it's not a big thing. Whereas in Arkansas, truck stop based is a big thing. Here it is not. But there are a lot of organizations, projects, um, campaigns going on and happening. And the two that I chose to talk about today were the Project COPE and the Blue Campaign. Project COPE is a youth-focused group or project that kind of teaches them and makes them more aware of the issue at hand. And it also provides them with assistance and resources, people to talk to that they may or may not need throughout anything that may or may not happen. Cause a lot of times you just don't know. And then the blue campaign, it is a campaign that partners with the ICE who investigates immigrant trafficking cases. And this gives them the um it grants them the non-immigrant status that allows them to be eligible for the hhs certification which then allows them to receive benefits under the federal state programs which i think is really cool because a lot of people could end up here from out of state and or from out of country and they get here and they are freed or they find a way out and they have nowhere to go and no one to help them but the Blue Campaign is working to allow um, them to find help or seek services that they may or may not need. So yeah, it's a lot. Um, there's so much to like take in. There's a lot that I didn't even fit in my paper. Um, and there's a lot that I can't fit in this video, but I hope that the more research that schools do on this and the more that people talk about it, the more importance there will be, or the more eyes will be looking at this and the more will be done about it. And one day we won't have to worry about it. So thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Bye.